Like, there's no way with these with these tool sets that these characters are going to be irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's definitely played out in a lot of like local scenes and stuff. We've been seeing a lot of Lucina and Inkling, and Marth and Pokemon Trainer have been doing really great work in their own right as well. I know uh, in Orcal we have Smiley doing uh, quite a bit with his Pokemon Trainer, and then we've also of course have Leffen and uh, Ned as well rocking these characters. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see. I, I feel like the composition for uh, all of these characters are actually pretty solid, but especially with Lucina and Inkling, you know, they have quick hitboxes. They're pretty wide, so you can get those juggles and, uh, you know, tennis tennis uh, plays pretty consistently. Oh, it'll be interesting to see, definitely. And that's it, though. Already Pokemon Trainer going to die right there. I believe that's White Core is the Pokemon Trainer, but I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, the, um, what is it? The, the tether recoveries, they're not, uh, they're, they're vulnerable all the way through uh, as you go up, so it's definitely a lot easier to get them uh, in this game. Oh, than yeah. It was in Smash 4. You just throw out a hitbox between them and the ledge, and there's a good chance they'll have to, like, be pulled through it. Yeah. If you if you know your physics, then you can kind of predict predict the trajectory of how they'll come to the stage <laughs> based, on, based on how fast they were, they it's were a, tethering. It's a good thing I've always done, like, rope swinging, like, simulations in my head in my free time. Exactly. Finally pays off. Alright, uh... That was, uh... Okay, that was just back to her killing. I wasn't sure okay. for a moment, like, it was throw invincibility along with Lucina doing the trick, but yeah, Inkling back there also kills. Yeah. Just a solid start from the green team. Yeah, already getting a three-stock lead. And they're looking to, to finish it off as well, sending off uh, Mitch even further. A lot of patience. <laughs> it's so interesting to see in Ultimate, like, multiple people holding shield at the same time because we're so used to thinking as shield is like a terrible option in this game. Oh yeah. But uh, in doubles, like just not being susceptible to being hit is still like the most valuable thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, shield still has some valuable properties. It's still print one. Uh, it's still, uh, you know, able to defend and uh, it's a good neutral mix up option. So it's not, it's not terrible, but there's definitely a few nerfs about it that make it a little bit harder. You just have to have a different mindset, like, you know, jump out of shield instead of shield drop or anything like that. Yeah. And it does look like SS is the one who's trying to take point more often than not. Like, K9 steps forward as soon as SS is hit backwards so they don't lose any stage control. But they're uh, they're relying on SS's movement uh, with Inkling to really create these openings. And then Lucina's power can just swoop in and get, a, like, kills at around, like, 120. So far, red team is not too far behind. Still was able to take two stocks uh, from the green team. Yeah. But they're going to have to get something going because their percent is slowly climbing. Oh, man. <laughs> just white core doing whatever he can to interrupt that 2v1. Just even using withdraw to get in the way, but missing entirely. And then soon afterwards, you know, his teammate Mitch being taken apart. Now he's got the 2v1 using that free air dodge and the Pokemon switch and also getting Charizard you know, at 103%. You kind of need whatever weight you can to get to live even longer. Yeah, uh, Pokemon Switch is uh, intangible frame 1 to 25, so it's definitely a valuable resource uh, to have. As <laughs> this is kind of unique characters in this game, you know, three characters in one. Oh, but the up air! Uh, Not gonna do it yet. No, he's still in it. Yeah. Charizard is, again, a pretty heavy Pokemon. There we go, the back air that far off stage is definitely a goner. But, uh,. It was really, uh, I, I liked that like K9 and SS still have a very solid grasp of like how to go into a doubles game with a strategy in mind, right? Like they very clearly had roles where SS was the point man for the most part and K9 was hanging back, finding conversions and stuff afterwards. And then uh, their efficiency once they did find 2v1 situations and like get openings, like because Mitch and like White Core weren't able to get in the way fast enough, they took so much damage in the meantime. And that's... That's something that's true across every single Smash game. You just have to be on point uh, whenever possible, because if you're hit to the other side of the stage and you don't have a fast recovery back to the center stage, your teammate's in a world of hurt. They're going to take like 80%. Right. I think we have ourselves some new options being selected by these guys. Huh. I wonder what's uh, going on yeah, here. Yeah, it was uh, the team attack. Oh, there's no uh, team attack? Yeah. Oh, okay. That Team Attack wasn't on? Was not on. I knew it! I told you Team Attack wasn't on! <laughs> yeah, I, I told Shrines, and then they went up to do it, but they're, they're gonna count the match. They're gonna count the match? Yeah. yeah. It's going against game two, but they, they mixed it. Alright, alright. But yeah, uh, guys, if you didn't hear from the uh, ambient noise, Team Attack was in fact off. Um, but because neither team really noticed, they're deciding to just keep the results of that game. Yeah, uh, but they the, went back and fixed it. It's like the it's like the rule set clause, right? Where yeah. like, if you started the match, you agreed to the rule sets that were 
like set. Yeah. Right there. Uh, that happened. Uh, that clause has been here since uh, G4. I should have I should have yeah. trusted my eyes more when I saw the uh, Me Swordsman hit and not hit the uh, Shield Broken opponent because I was just like. We've seen other sword hitboxes not be good in Smash history. Maybe this is one of those. Yeah. But no, no. It was, I find it funny they bad. finished the match because K9 and SS were like, Team Attack's not on, like, immediately after the match. Finished. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, they still finished the match, though. Anyways, yeah. I mean, they weren't really abusing it in any way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I, I'd be personally fine with letting it rock, too. If yeah. I was, even if I was the one beaten by it, it's like, well, they didn't, they weren't carried by it or anything. Right. But I'm happy that we, we got that fixed. Mm -hmm. You see, guys, like, it, it it always happens at some point. Like, it's it's Murphy's law. Just kind of, it's the reason why we, most rules sets advocate just static hazards off because like we've all known to always turn off team attack, right? Or yeah. turn on team attack, and like we still messed it up. So like getting hazards and stuff that's even harder. But a Robin switch instead of the Pokemon trainer and the and the oh no we still got the Mars. Yeah, yeah it looked like he was hovering around another character. So. I actually like Robin uh, as a character in doubles just because of the projectile control, especially when you have Thoron, which is so buffed in this game. Like, if the uh, opponents aren't ready to go at any moment, like, your teammate just jumps and you let it rip. Yeah. And you might be able to snipe uh, a whole bunch of people off that. Or just general confirms, especially you have the uh, the art fire as well, being able to hold people in place for you and your teammates to really get something spicy started. Yeah, you also have the really strong Levin Sword, so that's also going to be something that you can take into account too. Yeah. And something that's also very useful is that you have that little bar on top of Robin, so you're able to see the usage on the items, so that way your partner can also know, okay, I have, he has this many uses left to like try and get a Levin Sword combo, for example, or something like that. It's not that you have to guess and see how many uses he's done his sword so far with your partner. Ooh. Good conversion with the up tilt just at a moment's notice. And just like that, both members of Red Team lose their first stocks. Yeah, we've seen I, as a neutral air uh, being able to kill the, the Marth at the other side of the stage as well. Red Team uh, had a really nice juggle going on there, but the one thing that was noticeable to me is that I don't think they've teamed with each other that much because they were both jumping in the air looking for the same hit at the same location, right? Like one of them wasn't fading back to try to get the juggle uh, ping pong hit right afterwards. Right. Um, so just having a little bit more uh, stabilized roles between the two of them, I think, will help them a lot in the future. Right. Good pressure coming from SS, being able to get that back there, push them back into the corner, potentially trying to get a ping pong. Yeah. There's just a lot of damage already put onto the red team, especially the Marth. Yeah. Like, one good Mary should be able to seal out the stock if he can get it. Or, oh. you know, just a bunch of different op options from Inkling will be able to kill in this game. What the Elwind actually killing off that edge guard? That was actually really impressive. Yeah, uh, you can angle Elwind a lot uh, deeper than you could uh, in Smash 4, so it definitely helps uh, while trying to get back to the stage, being able to change your hitboxes. Oh, for sure. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> it got edge guarded <laughs> again while attempting to edge guard. That's, yeah, that's been the second time we've seen White Core pull that off. The one thing that I'd like to see, oof, Mitch uh, do a little bit better. Oh no. Uh, directional air dodged. Uh, away, but green team's still going to have one stock ahead of the red team. Did K9 also directional air dodge away, or was he just in free fall? Yeah, he, he, he directional air dodged. Okay. So that was unfortunate. Uh, I, I think uh, Charles uh, said that the uh, the most common way that people are going to SD is probably directional air dodge off stage. Yeah. It's yeah. like you try to tech and then realize you don't even touch the stage and you directional air dodge and you're like, oh shoot. That, okay. that's, that's why... Uh, you, you know somebody's brave if they actually tech in a direction because they had to buffer that, right? Which meant that they could have directional air dodge and die. They were just that certain. Yeah. Otherwise, like tech in place is like the safest like uh, call to make. Right. Um, speaking of directional air dodge, uh, SS also did that as he was. I think he was trying to tech the dolphin slash, but he didn't realize that it was gonna not send him anywhere. Mm -hmm. So that's something you have to be aware of too. Like are, when you like press air dodge, are you gonna be in hit stun? Or are you going to be in a tech situation, or are you just going to immediately be uh, actable again and accidentally SD? And there we go, the double edge guard putting Red Team in a terrible spot, and from there the jab and S smash closes it out. Bruce Brothers move on 2 0. One of the, uh, yeah, yeah I, I mentioned that like one of the big things they, they really leveraged that game was even more so like the 2v1 situations. Not, not even the 2v1s, but like uh, one member of a green team would be in a really favorable edge guard.